Welcome to App Design Tips. Today I want to introduce some great features that was released at Adobe Max for Adobe XD. And one of the great topics around this release is design systems. There's a new way that these design systems are established. And so let's walk through how we can use this and make the most advantage of these great features. Okay, so to start off showing this, I wanna actually use an example template of a design system. And you can find the same template by going to File, Get UI Kits, and More UI Kits here. And I'll share a link in the description below if you just wanna click on that link on YouTube. And if we scroll down here, we have a nice template that's Design Systems by Ole Frederick Lee. And you can click Download, and you'll have this same document that I have. So now let's jump back into XD. And we have this document that already has some components and assets such as our colors, our character styles, and even our uh, buttons and other components. Now, if you're completely new to Adobe XD and you're just learning UI UX design, I have a complete course on Adobe XD learning how to design and prototype an app from scratch. And this teaches you some great UI UX best practices along the way too. So I have a steep discount, 80% off. If you click on the link in the description below, to this course and I hope you enjoy it. So to take a look at how this works in our assets panel, we see over here to the bottom left, we actually no longer have an assets panel. It's called libraries now. And one of the benefits of this is we used to have a Creative Cloud libraries panel and an assets panel. And so there was a little bit of conflict into where our content lived. Right now, this is all one thing. It's our libraries panel. And when we open this up, we have access to our document assets. So we can see all of our colors, our character styles, and our components. And this is the same as it's been in the past. But now, when I click over here on the left arrow, I can actually see all of my published libraries, whether they were the Creative Cloud libraries or any other design system. And so I can always jump into my document assets, but I can also load up other libraries. So if I click Browse Libraries, instead of browsing all of my online documents, now I can only browse the published library. So you can designate whether you want a library to be published for use or not. So here we can see all of the libraries and we can even publish this document as a library. Before I do that, one thing that's really important to note still is you can still copy components from one document to another to link these up. And so even without this library being published, you can, for example, take these buttons, let's select all of them, and I'm just going to open up a brand new document. And this document is my new website. You can see how there are no document assets in here right now. And so simply copying and pasting from one cloud document to the other will link these still the same way as they have been before. So that's great if we have edit access to both of these documents and we wanna do that. But if we want more governance and we want to control who either views the document and who can edit, we can publish this design system now and have control over who is using it. So let's take a look at how that works. We're gonna jump back into that design system here. And right now this is not published, so all I have to do is click here on Document Assets, and now I have this little Publish icon here. And so now we have the current file. We can just hit Publish, and it's telling us we need to save this as a cloud document before we publish. So I'll hit Continue here. It's going to ask us to save this. So, um, but I'll hit save here. And now that this document is saved to the cloud, it's going to continue publishing this library. Now, one of the problems that we've had in the past when working with other designers is any change that we make to the global design system that we're sharing, whether or not we're ready for the designers to adopt those changes, they're automatically going to see those updates. And now we have control over when this is updated. So here, I can invite my colleagues. So I'm just going to add an email here. And then I can decide whether they view this document or they can edit the library. And in this case, I just want them to have view access so they can pull these assets from this global design system into their document. And they can even unlink it and reuse this however they want, but they're not going to affect that global style guide if I'm the owner of that. And so, for example, now we can close this libraries panel here and this is published. So if we jump back into our new website, we have these linked components as we had before. But now if we go back here, we can see all of our published libraries 
and here we have the XD design system. And you can see all of the colors, the character styles, and the components that we published. And so now, for example, we can drag these in here and make use of them. It's going to have this green uh, link icon showing this is a linked component. And because I have access to both and I can edit both, I can right click here and still edit main in source document. It's going to find that source document for me. And I can come in here and start to make changes of this whole component here. So if I want this background to be light blue, for example, I can just change the tint of this a little bit. So let's just try that nice gradient here. So now in the past, when we save this document and we jump back into our new website, then this link used to be blue saying, hey, something changed, Do you wanna update this. Now as a designer pulling from this global design system, because they haven't published these changes yet, I don't have access to these. So this is a little bit more governance control knowing that whatever I change in here, I don't have to show to all the other designers until I'm ready. So if I want to publish this, you can see this little blue dot here saying, hey, something changed, do you wanna publish? So we can click on this link now, click update, and as soon as we do click update, let's jump back into our new website and now we get that blue link. Now, if I want to too, as a designer on this main website, if I wanna break this link here and just make my own component, I can right click right here and make local and that's going to remove that link and that dependency on that global style guide. So now this is my own. I can still change this main component. So if I right click now and edit main component, it's going to pull that main component up and now I can make any changes that I'd like. So here, if I just wanna make this white again, I can do that, uh, come back over here into this instance of the main component and that was applied as well. So now if you're interested in learning more about design systems and how this is used, please leave a comment below into what you're looking to learn because design system is such a deep topic. I wanna to create more videos showing how you can create the design system hierarchy in your organization and how you can organize these things to really scale your design across your organization. It's very helpful. In this video, we really just scratched the surface of what's capable, but I hope it's enough for you to dive in and learn how you can use this. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit that bell icon for more videos. So that's the new features on design systems that was released at Adobe Max 2020. There's also another great feature that allows you to design in 3D and make use of 3D with auto animate. So I have another video coming soon. So again, subscribe to be notified of that next video showing the other features within this release.